Good evening, friends. Welcome to Queens College, to our beautiful campus as we come back after the COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome to this year's Women's History Month celebration. Not only here in the room, but streaming online. My name is Frank H. Wu, and I have the honor of serving as president here at Queens College. I'm delighted to see so many remarkable women in one room. Isn't it great? That starts with our host, the Queens District Attorney, Melinda Katz. And members of the Queens County Women's Bar Association and our keynote speaker, New York State Attorney General, Letitia James. <laughs> The district attorney and the attorney general have made history themselves. Dedicated public servants, they are the first women ever to hold their respective titles. Prior to becoming the first woman of color to hold statewide office in New York, Attorney General James was New York City's public advocate, the first woman of color in a citywide office. And before that, she represented Brooklyn's 35th district on the New York City Council. DA Katz previously served New Yorkers, especially here in the borough of Queens, the world's borough, in the State Assembly, on the City Council, and as our borough president. Mary Murphy, our MC, is also no stranger to this campus. She's an alumna, and we take enormous pride in her successful career after majoring in communications in her chosen field as a reporter at WPIX. I congratulate, I congratulate all of tonight's highly accomplished honorees. That includes former acting borough president Sharon Lee, Life Camp CEO Erica Ford, Queens County Clerk, Audrey Pfeffer, also a Queens College alum, and the Queens DA Office of Human Resources Director, Myrna Mateo. I know we have a wonderful, exciting program ahead of us with performances by singer Jenna Esposito, Black Resource Network founder Ali Abraham, and the Fogo Azul Marching Band Drumline. So, with great pleasure, I turn the podium over to our MC, Ms. Murphy. Thank you, President Wu. It's really an honor to be here this evening with such distinguished women and men. But this is about the ladies tonight. And I, I was quite excited to see uh, Letitia James, our Attorney General. I did a lot of reporting on her in the last year. And thank you to DA Katz for inviting me to serve as MC. We recently did a very important project together, which I believe she will talk about a little bit later. But thank you, President Wu, because it's really a thrill to be back on campus. My husband gets mad at me sometimes when I date myself, but I'm very proud to say that I graduated in 1981 and I got into the news business right away. 41 years in the New York television business and <laughs> in a medium that's not always kind to women as they get older, I'm very glad to say that I am still thriving and surviving, but more importantly, like so many of you, I'm still making a difference and that counts for something. <laughs> so it's, it's really nice to be here this evening with all of you. And with that being said, I have to change into my reading glasses, dating myself again, and say welcome to Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz's 2022 Women's History Month celebration. As you know, my name is Mary Murphy from PIX11 News, and it's my pleasure to host tonight's program. Thank you again for joining us. At this time, I am going to invite the City University of New York Public Safety Honor Guard to present the colors.
and a little bit of the pipes there. St. Patrick's Day was last week. Thank you very much to the Honor Guard. And now I would like to welcome to the podium Jenna Esposito, who is based here in New York. She will lead us in the Star Spangled Banner. Please, everyone, you all rise for the national anthem. Try that again. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars? Through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Thank you very much to the Public Safety Honor Guard for presenting the colors. You may be seated. It is now my distinct pleasure to bring to the stage the person who is responsible for making this event possible, Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> We have to hear some accolades first. D.A. Katz is a lifelong resident of our borough who has spent most of her career in public service working to protect and improve the quality of life of our residents, visitors, and business owners. Elected D.A. in 2019, Melinda Katz is the first woman to serve as Queens County District Attorney in the city of New York. <laughs> Even better, she has also established the first all-women leadership team with Chief Executive ADA Jennifer Nyberg and Chief of Staff Camille Chinkey fat Let's hear it for the ladies. <laughs> DA Katz has led her office through an unprecedented pandemic to ensure the safety of more than 2.2 million people who live in, work in, and visit Queens. As Queens County's top law enforcement official, Melinda Katz brings a steady community-centered approach to the office of the district attorney, while also helping to implement meaningful changes in the criminal justice system. Please join me in welcoming to the stage, District Attorney Melinda Katz.
Thank you uh, very much, uh, Ms. Murphy. Uh, Ms. Murphy, uh, Queens County. I love that she's from Queens County. And you still live here. Oh, she's a voter. Love your show. <laughs> uh, first, uh, let me thank Ms. Murphy for the work that she has done with WPIX, but also for uh, helping people all across this great city. Uh, her achievements and her accolades uh, will take all night to name, uh, but to highlight some of Mary's most recent work, we worked together just a month ago, it seems, on a segment about the prevalent issue of human trafficking in our borough, and her coverage has helped shine an important light in this degrading industry. In October 2021, Mary launched regular segments on WPIX 11 News called The Missing, reporting on families seeking their loved ones who have disappeared. Her work has assisted finding multiple missing persons, and we thank her for her dedication. Uh, and apparently, according to this, but it can't be true, by April of 2020, you won 30 Emmy Awards? Is that possible? 30 Emmy Awards. But it is my pleasure now to really welcome our guest speaker, who is the Attorney General, don't get up yet, uh, the State of New York, uh, Tish James. Uh, you know, I was reading my speech tonight, and, and I just, I want to go a little off script and say this. You know, my speech includes a lot of things about human trafficking and about domestic violence uh, and about women being victims. I will tell you this. The honorees tonight and our guest speaker, Attorney General James, and now the speaker of the New York City Council, Council Member Adams, proves that we are not, we are not victims. We are leaders. We can lead the rest of the city. We can lead the country. We can lead this state every day. And we empower, we empower the next generation of women leaders to do the same. And I love the fact that Townsend Harris High School is here tonight. Yeah, raise your hand, Townsend Harris. We're leaders of the future and the guest speakers tonight and the honorees tonight prove that every single day. So I want to welcome up to the stage a fierce advocate for the state of New York, a woman who has brought light to gun trafficking and to human trafficking and made sure that people are accountable for their actions and the wrongs that they do to the state of New York, Attorney General Tish James. Let's give a round of applause to the district attorney who is wearing suffragette white. <laughs> suffragette white, yes, that's what she's wearing. Um, <laughs> I want to recognize uh, some of my colleagues who are in the audience. Listen, when I grew up in Brooklyn, I know I, I'm in Queens, but I grew up in Brooklyn. Um, and I grew up um, in Park Slope in a neighborhood at that time it was primarily African American, Italian, and Irish. And I had, um, my best friends were Italian and Irish. And there was um, one young lady um, who, who she and I, we had a falling out, we had a fight one day. And she reminds me so much of the person that I'm going to introduce to you and recognize. Um, she reminds me because she has her spirit, she looks like her, her name was Angela. Um, and so ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet my Angela, someone who reminds me of Angela. Ladies and gentlemen, assembly member, Stacy Amato. <laughs> She's tough, she's rough, she's, you know, she knows how to get things uh, done. She doesn't hold her tongue. She reminds me so much of Angela, and that's why I love her dearly. And of course, to her mom, who is the honoree today, who I had the honor and privilege of working with when I was a staff attorney I'm in Albany working for the State Assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing, amazing uh, former Assemblywoman, um, 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 I was going to say former Assemblymember Amato, uh, but um, former Assemblymember Steph, uh, Pfeffer, Assemblymember Pfeffer, exactly. Yes, and another good friend of mine um, who represents parts of Queens, who's doing an amazing job, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Assemblymember Neely, Ro Neely Rosick. And someone who also is breaking glass ceilings each and every day, and who also has an amazing gift, she can sing, and I hope when she's introduced, she sings. Um, yeah, she has an amazing voice, you've got to hear it. Um, she is the speaker of the city council, a city council now which is led by women who are in the majority. Ladies and gentlemen, speaker Adrian Adams. Yes. 
I also um, received a letter from our great governor, another woman who was breaking glass ceilings. I um, mean, she wrote a letter um, and it reads, I'm not going to read all of it, but I will read the following. Today, your community of colleagues uh, and peers assemble in spirit of women throughout uh, time who have forged paths of opportunity for us and for others. They fought for the rights of women in the voting booth, the classroom, the workplace, and the halls of government, giving us the chance to prove that we can overcome any obstacles and exceed any expectations uh, to strengthen the lives of people in Queens and across New York State. And it is signed by our great governor, uh, Governor Kathy Hochul. So I did not know I was the keynote speaker, but you know, that's what happens when friends ask you to come by and say a few words. <laughs> Thank you, Melinda. But since she has the power of arrest, I've got to come. So, <laughs> so uh, it's an honor and a privilege. She is a friend. I've known her for a very long time. And it's great, obviously, to celebrate women's history. It's a reflection of how important that, that history is and how seriously the Queens District Attorney, as well as my office and members of the Assembly and the City Council under the leadership of the Speaker, take our shared commitment to celebrate and to promote diversity. I wanna thank her and her team for putting together today's event. And I specifically wanna thank the District Attorney because her leadership team is primarily women. So let's give it up again for the District Attorney. Most of all, I want to thank all of our heroes and our sheroes, our mothers, our foremothers, our aunts, our aunties, all of those who love us each and every day, who encourage us. Um, they are brave and brilliant foremothers, the fearless, peerless women of today. And also, they represent our family, our friends, and our allies. Um, and they support us each and every day and love us and encourage us. This morning, I started out my day uh, on Long Island. I did an event with Girls, Inc and it's an organization that promotes young women. And so it's really critically important that this month we celebrate women, young women, um, senior women, all women, and that we let them know that they can do anything that they wanna do. You know, we live in a society, and the DA knows this well, we live in a society where women are often abused, victims of domestic violence. Women are often silent, they carry those worries alone. Women, you know, we carry the shoulders of the world, and we rarely take care of ourselves, right? So women, I want you to exhale, I want you to breathe, I want you to sit back, and I really want you to enjoy this program because clearly you need a day off, you need some time for yourself, you need to take care of yourself, you need to make sure um, that you're around people who support you as well. But let me just begin by giving you some fun facts. You know, Congress authorized the first Women's History Month in 1987. Yeah, 1987. Um, and so this year marks the 35th anniversary of that celebration, just 35 years ago. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure that women have been around for, um, <laughs> yeah, for all of human history. And I'm not going to throw shade on Congress at all uh, for setting aside just one month out of 12 um, or waiting until the late 1980s. But something tells me the reason why they celebrated women in 1987 is because there were more women elected into Congress. And that's why um, they have, yes, recognized women. Because Women's History Month, my, friend, my friends, is very necessary. It reminds us that women have driven human history, but all too often from the back seat. It reminds us that women's stories, their testimony, and the truth have long, for, have for far too long been ignored. And our rights to the driver's seat have been too long denied. It's taken most of history to secure the basic rights of women to work, to vote, to own property, and to control their own bodies. And we have so much work to do. And we, and we are still fighting our right to make decisions about our own body and about reproductive care. And how many of you in this room, and I know the men in here too, believe equal pay for equal work? Raise your hand. Okay, so I, only, I think I only counted three men, and then when there was one man, and I'm not going to single him out, went halfway. So, <laughs> so if you, so we obviously uh, in this country, unfortunately, they don't pay women the same as men for basically doing the same job. It takes us several months and sometimes in even cases for women of color, to, it takes us a year to catch up to men for basically doing the same job. And so here in the city of New York, we have a law 
um, when I was a member of the city council that we passed and the state passed it as well, which basically says that you cannot ask an individual who's applying for a position what their previous salary was. You need to basically pay women their worth, pay the individual their worth, and start from that viewpoint. And so now that is a law in the state of New York. So if any employer asks you, what was your previous salary, just tell them, well, the Attorney General of the state of New York passed a law in the city council, and that is now illegal, sir, or ma'am. I want you, yes, and so it's really critically important. And it's also a law now in the state of New York, thanks to the women in the state legislature. They can no longer ask your previous salary history because more and more women are living in poverty. It's the feminization of poverty in this country. And part of it is, is because of equal pay, because we do not pay women their worth. It's also important to understand that we represent half the population of this planet. Yes, half of the population, yet only a fraction of the population in the rooms where power happens, where decisions are made. So let's take this month to tell women's stories, to remember the struggle that has brought us this far, and let us commit ourselves to the struggle ahead. And let us nurture young women. You know, I just went to the ladies' room, and about five women walked into the ladies' room. These, there, I see them there. And they started screaming, stand up, all of you. Every single one of you, stand up. And then assembly member Audrey Pfeffer, they said, can we have a selfie? I said, it's the bathroom. <laughs> and then one said, I don't have to go to the bathroom anymore. Ah, it's Letitia James. And I said, how did I stop you from going to the bathroom? I <laughs> and then, you know, I was washing my hands and they were like, oh, and they were all like, you know, breathing hard. And I was like, relax, go do what you have to do and I'll meet you outside. But give them a round of applause <laughs> for confronting me, for demanding a selfie, for circling me, not allowing me to exit, and for doing it in a team, teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. So another round of applause to these women who wouldn't allow me to go to the ladies' room. And everywhere, we've got to support these young women. We've got to support these young women in college. We've got to make sure that we hire more women, that we pay women more, that we vote for more women, that we support women, that we value women, that we respect women, that we give women their space, that we do not treat them in a hostile work environment. That's really critically important. We have got to encourage everyone, teach one. Each one, teach one. That's what this month really is all about. So it has been my honor and my, my privilege to just say a few words because I do know that I, uh, right now I stand in a dangerous place and that is between you and the food and you uh, honoring all of these amazing, amazing honorees here today. So um, as the Attorney General of the State of New York, just let me also go on to say, um, it's been a busy couple of years as the Attorney General. I never wanted to step into the spotlight. All I wanted to do um, was just do some consumer cases. But sometimes you gotta step out of your comfort zone and take on a leadership role, particularly when the rights of vulnerable and marginalized people and individuals in the state of New York are under attack. You've gotta stand up. And so even though, young ladies, you might be shy, you might be nervous, you gotta step to the podium and say, I've gotta lead, I've gotta protect my state. I gotta protect individuals, unfortunately, who are in harm's way. I've gotta protect the environment. I've gotta stand up for immigrants. I've gotta make sure that our state is made whole. I've gotta make sure that I represent the tax base, make sure that individuals um, who once benefited from the state and local tax enjoy that same benefit. All of those issues and more come across my desk, and they've come across my desk in the last couple of years. But each and every time, I just said, well, ain't I a woman, and therefore, I've got to do this. I've got to stand up. My team has to stand up to bullies and to everyone else who is going to hurt others. All of you have the ability to do it. It's part of your DNA. It's right in your hands. And so I urge all of you to sit up straight because you're women, and we're celebrating you not just in this month, but each and every day. And that's why it's an honor and a privilege to wake up each and every day and say, yes, 
I'm a woman. God bless you and thank you. So I want to thank the Attorney General for <clears throat> being the guest speaker. <laughs> I want to thank the Attorney General for reminding me never to tell her secrets in the bathroom. <laughs> but uh, she is uh, uh, truly amazing. And I thank you, Attorney General James, for all that you do for the state of New York uh, and for the partnerships that our offices have had uh, since I became the DA and before. And we served together in the city council eons ago. So thank you for being here tonight. So uh, I do want to take this opportunity to extend my gratitude to Queens College and President Wu and everybody that was involved in having us here tonight. I want to uh, thank uh, Jeff Rosenstock and Ms. Lisa. Uh, I want to thank the Queens Women's Bar Association and the Center for Women of New York who always are there when we need them. Not only when we need them, but when anyone needs them. And Malini, a thank you and to everyone uh, from the organizations. Um, you know, I want to, at, at this point, I'm supposed to read, read a speech. I, I'm going to say this, though. Um, as the first female district attorney of the county of Queens, we had an amazing start to our administration, right? We came in, COVID was two months later. We came in, everything went virtual, 100%. Not, not in the county, not in the city, not in the state, in the world. We went virtual, 100%. We came in, we had a long-standing conversation, which was way overdue, about the murder of George Floyd. We had uh, 800 uh, people at the office, many of whom uh, may not have wanted a change of administration, many of whom wanted a change of administration, but you know what, that was it. I was in charge there with my team, and we made the office happen every single day with so many of the people that are sitting in this room. And we stand on the shoulders of so many folks that come before us. And, you know, I want to talk to you about domestic violence. And I'm just going to tell you that it is an issue in the borough of Queens County. We have a great chief in, in Ken, Ken Rosenbaum who works so, or Eric Rosenbaum, who works so hard every day on domestic violence with his team. I want to talk to you about human trafficking, where we have Jessica Moulton, whose sole job every morning, whose sole job is to make sure that if someone is being trafficked against their will, that they have somewhere to go, they have people to talk to, and they have advocates who will fight for their freedom and fight for them to start their life all over again. I do want to talk about special victims, who that was Eric Rosenbaum, not domestic violence, who every single day uh, work to make sure that those who are young, who have no one to advocate for them, or those who are elderly who have no one to advocate for them, that the Queen's DA's office works to do it every single day. And so we have all of that, and we should be there for all of your constituency because we care deeply. But you know, we also have we also have Jen Nyberg, who is a 28 year old, a 28 year prosecutor, not 28 years old. We also have a 28-year prosecutor in Jen Nyberg, who is the chief assistant. We also have Camille Chinkyfat, who is the chief of staff, who spent her entire life looking out for other people's careers. We also have Sharon Lee, who is going to be honored tonight, former borough president of the County of Queens, who has done amazing things when it comes to community leadership. We also have Erica Ford, who was talking about gun violence as a public health issue before anybody even knew that gun violence was a public health issue. And she is an amazing woman, an amazing leader. We also have Myrna Mateo, who this office would not be running without. Myrna Mateo does it every single day. We have Audrey Pfeffer, who showed the power in the New York State Assembly when women had to be like, can I go to the bathroom, please? Right? The bathroom wasn't even inside the chamber. So she showed her leadership and her amazing uh, challenges that were ahead of her every single day in the Assembly. So we have power. We have power to lead. We have power to help. We have power to make sure that when high school students come to see us, that they see examples of where they can be one day if they choose to be there. And it's all about the choice. And Erica Ford just walked in there. Erica, I said you were talking about public health issues before they were public health issues. So it is an amazing night. And I want to thank the DA's office for being here as well. I see so many people from different organizations. But you know, we, me and Jen and Camille could not do what we do were it not for everyone sitting here from the Queens District Attorney's Office in every bureau and in every division. 
I do want to also acknowledge Betty Bratton, who is chair of Board 6, Frank Galuccio, who is the district manager and district leader, and Judge Augie Ogadi, who has joined us here tonight, and we thank them. And I know we already acknowledge Assemblywoman Amato, but we thank her for her advocacy as well. I'm going to turn the microphone back to Mary Murphy. Thank you, everybody. And for all of those pointing at her, uh, we're going to hear from Speaker Adams in just a minute. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> thank you, DA Cass, for that very energetic, inspiring speech. And also, thanks again to our Attorney General, Letitia James, for her powerful speech. Um, we really have a lot of amazing women here tonight. I think we should give them a round of applause. In coming together this evening, we also celebrate the unique and vital contributions of women around the world, while affirming to the younger generations that any barrier can be overcome and anything is possible. Uh, you know, I can tell you I'm the daughter of immigrants, first generation here in Queens. My parents came from Ireland, the West Coast. My mother was one of those Searsha Ronan girls you saw in the movie Brooklyn. She got seasick crossing the Atlantic. She was about one of about 50,000 coming across in the 1950s. But she's the one who gave me the idea to go into the news business. And a funny story about two months before graduation from Delahanty High School on Merrick Boulevard, I had not planned my college career. And the secretary said, where are you going to college, Mary? And I said, I don't really know. She's like, Mary, you have to go to college. And I quickly signed up for Queens, and it changed my world. And um, I'm very happy I came here. Very glad to be back tonight. We will hear from many more esteemed guests tonight, elected officials, and other women in power. And we will enjoy additional performances by artists Julie Winter and Fogo Azul, an all-women drumline marching band. Additionally, we will present honors to community leaders and a member of the Queens District Attorney's Office, all of whom are women who work to make this borough a better, safer place to live in and visit. First, though, let me read a congratulatory letter from a woman who is another first in New York State, our governor. It's dated March 24th, 2022. Dear friends, it is a pleasure to send greetings to everyone gathered for the Women's History Month celebration hosted by Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz, Queens College, and the Queens County Women's Bar Association. Throughout history, the contributions of women have improved the lives of people across this state and nation. Many of New York State's most valued institutions and organizations are thriving and successful thanks to the leadership, vision, and excellence of women. Women working in academia and the law are among the most distinguished professionals. And this event celebrates the many in Queens County who stand out within these respected disciplines. They make a difference in the lives of people each day through their commitment to educating the next generation, devotion to the rule of law, and dedication to public service. Today, your community of colleagues and peers assemble in the spirit of women throughout time who forged paths of opportunity for us and for others. They fought for the rights of women in the voting booth, the classroom, the workplace, and the halls of government, giving us the chance to prove that we can overcome any obstacle and exceed any expectation to strengthen the lives of people in Queens County and across New York State. As we observe Women's History Month, I applaud all of you for being role models for future generations and know that together we will add new chapters to our history. Best wishes for an enjoyable celebration. Sincerely, Kathy Hochul, Governor. And now for the fun stuff, the women's drum line. Fogo Azul NYC is one of New York City's best and most powerful performance groups. The group consists of a New York City-based all-women, trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming Brazilian samba reggae drum line. Fogo Azul, which means blue fire, was born from the heart and mind of Buffalo native Stacy Kovacs. It represents a deep respect of cultural roots, the importance of activism, and strong support of gender equality. 
please help me welcome to the stage the Fogo Azul Drumline.
let's give it up for Fogo Azul. All right. Well, the next person that I am pleased to introduce, uh, rumor has it, has a wonderful singing voice. I don't know if we'll hear from you tonight, <laughs> but, but it does give me great pleasure to introduce a woman who is rewriting history in New York every single day. Council member Adrienne Adams is the first African-American woman to serve as Speaker of the New York City Council. <laughs> She is also the first woman to represent Council District 28. In her time in public service, Speaker Adams has worked tirelessly for important causes, including child and adult literacy, equality in education, home foreclosure prevention, and assistance for small business owners. Please help me welcome to the podium New York City Council Speaker Adrian Adams. You don't have to get up, it's only me. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Oh my goodness, I've never followed a drum line before. The drum said Grooversity, Erica. I'm scared now. I, we should have. We, we sh it's not too late. <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am so, so honored to be here this evening. You have already had your wonderful keynote by our esteemed Attorney General, Letitia James. Let's just give her another round of applause for being Letitia James. Thank you to our wonderful first female in the borough of Queens to represent us as our district attorney, the incomparable Melinda Katz. To all of our honorees and our community leaders tonight, you know, I, I, I look at this list of honorees and I, I, I am in awe of all of them. Audrey Pfeffer, my goodness, has been a leader for us, uh, not just in state, but also in the borough of Queens for so long. And I know that she encourages you, don't fight jury duty. <laughs> make it happen, make it happen and talk it up in your communities. Let's give Audrey Pfeffer a round of applause. I also greet her wonderful daughter, my colleague in government, the wonderful assembly member, Stacey Pfeffer Amato. I also note that we have an honoree in someone that also has represented the borough of Queens with such elegance, dynamism, and energy. She stood on the shoulders of Melinda Katz, and that's a tough act to follow in anybody's book in being borough president. But Sharon Lee came in at a time that we needed her badly. And what we, we love the most about Sharon Lee was that Sharon Lee was a powerful woman following a powerful woman. And she didn't skip a beat, did she? Let's hear it for Sharon Lee. And some may know this, but I do have a background in HR. It is rather painful sometimes, those who represent HR, because you feel like you carry the whole weight of the world, because the world is your company, the world is your conglomerate. And that is the weight of the world that you carry on you as representing human resources and being the director. So tonight, Mi uh, Myrna, Mateo, we salute you as being an honoree as well. And so when I say the weight of the world, this uh, final honoree uh, is an amazing woman. And I always say I stay in my lane because I can't step out of it because there is but one Erica Ford and she carries queens because she is one of our dynamic queens of queens. Nobody does Erica like Erica does Erica. And I'm telling you, if you see that orange running down through Southeast Queens, get out of the way and let Erica Ford have her way. She protects us when we're asleep. She protects us when we are awake. And she represents one of the most amazing, powerful, and effective, effective parts of our system that, that call themselves violence interrupters. And we don't mind being interrupted at all by the person, my sister, the dynamic leader of Queens, Erica Ford, representing Life Camp. 
So I celebrate the honorees. I say good evening to my community leaders tonight as well, Betty Brayton and Joe and Judge Augie. I say good evening to you as well. And you know, I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna sit down. I referenced today in our stated meeting of uh, the New York City Council, something that I found very profound. And for those of you that have been watching, have been watching the hearings uh, over the past few days of an amazing woman who will be elevated to justice, the first black woman to be on the Supreme Court of the United States. And I wore the colors today that she wore yesterday and some people are wearing it, but I was channeling her and wearing black and blue in honor of Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. So, as we kind of wrap up Women's History Month, but not really because as Tish said, we need to remember this women's history thing all the time. We know that we were given a month and some folk are just happy with a month, but women still have such a long way to go in this country. And if you notice the hearings and if you notice the treatment of this black woman yesterday, those of you that were sensitive to that, I'd be sensitive because I'm a black woman, so I was sensitive. So if you notice the treatment, I've never seen anybody else treated like that before. In hearings, Judge, I've never seen anybody treated that way. I've never seen someone that came before a body of leaders, of senatorial leaders in the United States be called a liar. I've never seen that. Yet, she was called a liar. We don't believe you, I don't believe you, I don't believe what you're saying, I don't believe you. Such arrogance, such duplicity. But these are the leaders of these great United States. And so women, as we continue to celebrate these women tonight, and we continue to celebrate each other forever, I say stand up in your power. The same young ladies that met Tish in the restroom tonight. <laughs> stand up in your power because you were strong enough to make sure that you knew what you wanted from her, your leader and your example, and you asked for it. Never, never be afraid to ask for what you want at the table. And as Tish said, and she channeled Sojourner Truth, she said, ain't I a woman? Well, yeah, 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 you're a woman, but you're more than that. You embody the birth of nations. Women, you gave birth to nations. So without you, there would be nobody on this planet. Stand up in that birthright and continue to give birth to your brilliance because you know what? You don't have to look for it. You came here with it. God bless you. Congratulations, honorees. Thank you, Speaker Adams. We're going to ask you to come up on stage again with DA Katz as we start presenting awards to our honorees. And the first, you've heard her name tonight, Sharon Lee. I'd like to welcome Sharon Lee to join us on stage as well with DA Katz and Speaker Adams. And here's what you should know, a little bit you should know about Sharon Lee. She is the former acting Queensborough president who has led this county through the apex of the COVID-19 pandemic by sponsoring mass giveaways, hand sanitizer distributions, food drives, and back to school giveaways for those in need. Prior to this vital role, Sharon served as Deputy Borough President and Communications Director when DA Katz had the honor of serving as Borough President. Sharon was an integral part of the team, driving the administration's top priorities and helped shape public positions on key issues. Sharon Lee, we are pleased to honor you for your endless contributions to this borough of Queens. Thank you. All right, as we make these presentations, if Assemblywoman Amato could come up with us as well. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, where is Sharon? She's always sneaking up on me. Hold on. All right. Um, so I, I know her history has been, um, has been talked about, but I want to just say a particular thank you. Uh, you know, I appointed, uh, Sharon became the borough president when I left to fill a two-month term. Uh, she was there for a year. <laughs> and she still talks to me. Uh, and, uh, you know, I am very grateful for that. 
Uh, she has served the County of Queens and the City of New York and the State of New York in different offices, uh, with different offices uh, throughout her history in civil service. Uh, and so on behalf of the DA's office and all that we work with, I want to you know, give this, uh, present this to Borough President Sharon Lee. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I wasn't told that I was I would be allowed to say a few words, so I'll just run with it a little bit. Um, but uh, I want to thank um, the district attorney for this great honor. Um, in particular, uh, being honored in the company of some really impactful people like Myrna and. Audrey Pfeffer, and of course, Erica Ford. Um, the impact that you have on people throughout the borough of Queens and the city of New York uh, and everywhere else, um, I have bared witness to, and so thank you for that. Um, I'm not sure how much longer I'm allowed to speak. That was it. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Um, that was it. Uh, I, I will take some liberty here actually. Um, we're in a room full of trailblazers and it cannot be overstated that when we see trailblazers, they, they do it with such grace. They make it look kind of easy. But I have seen behind the scenes for years upon years just the level of burden that it takes to be a, tra be a trailblazer. And I think what really sets trailblazers apart, um, both the ones from whom you heard earlier this evening, but also the ones who are being honored, is that they have something in common. And one of the things that they have in common is they have this tendency to pull people up, push people up, push people forward, sometimes even ahead of themselves. And so that is something that we honor, even if it takes a month out of the year. And so I'm truly humbled um, and I am grateful for the opportunities and the fortune to have worked for and with numerous trailblazers uh, and also to continue to push forward and upward many, many more. Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Lee. And now we'd like to welcome honoree Erica Ford to the stage. <laughs> Erica is a world-renowned human rights activist and anti-violence leader. For more than 30 years, she has impacted the lives of thousands of disenfranchised black and brown communities, schools, housing projects, and prisons. Erica's mantra, peace is a lifestyle, is evident in her tireless, innovative approach to creating healthy communities in New York City. In 2002, Erica founded Life Camp Inc., a nonprofit organization that provides marginalized youth and young adults with intensive case management, mentorship, access to education, employment opportunities, and unconventional therapeutic services to reduce violence and mitigate contact with the criminal justice system. Erica's success in Queens 
continues to be heralded and modeled for her innovative approach to addressing violence as a public health crisis. She's a true inspiration, and we're pleased to honor her tonight. Erica Ford, ladies and gentlemen. So if it seems like we're having a lot of fun tonight, we are. But I, I do want to bring us back down to this is serious stuff. Uh, there's a lot going on in the city. We're not going to prosecute our way out of gun violence. We're not going to prosecute our way out of the violence that is happening now in the city of New York. We need violence interrupters. We need people that understand the community. We need people who, when there is violence in the streets, can come out and arbitrate and make sure there isn't retaliation. We need people that others can look up to so that the youth are not picking up the same guns that were taken off the street the day before. And Erica Ford and Life, and Life Camp does that every single day. So thank you, Erica Ford, for the work that you do. Thank you so much, uh, D.A. Katz, and um, our illustrious speaker, and uh, the Assemblywoman. Thank you very much. And all of the beautiful um, co-honorees. Um, it's a pleasure, like Sharon said. Everything that Sharon said, ditto, right? <laughs> I want to tell two very quick stories. It would not be Erica Ford if I didn't come to the gate and they say, you can't come in, Erica Ford is already here. Oh. And I'm like, oh yeah? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you can't come in. So I'm like, okay, you tell DA Katz. Tonight? Yes. Oh, okay. I said, you tell DA Katz that I left and that Sanchez, you? Like, that you didn't let me in, okay? I said, okay, I'm out. So then um, they was like, okay, well then maybe the person up there could give you a pass or whatever. And you know what I did, right? I don't want to know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I kept driving, and then there's people running, no, you can't go in there. <laughs> I kept driving, right? And so, and there's police running behind me. And um, that's one. So I said, it wouldn't be Erica Ford. Like, I got to break into my own honoree, right? <laughs> then, so I'm this morning coming from the Hamptons. We woke up in the Hamptons this morning. We did a staff retreat in the Hamptons. We're in the Hamptons, having a good time. Hamptons, right? We're in the Hamptons. We get a call from the principal at one of the schools out here. This young man, he got jumped four times, and they said they're going to bring guns up here. Ah. So I turn around and look at my staff. They go, bring them up here. I'm like, yeah, of course, right. Bring them to the Hamptons. Why not? So they bring them to the Hamptons. We take them right from school to the Hamptons. Then they're like, you can't just bring him. You got to bring the other side, too. So we go get the other kid, the leader of the other gang, and we bring him too. So now, do you think we told their parents? No. We didn't tell their parents we were bringing the opposite sides. We asked them permission for each one to come. Because the kid got jumped on video, the video went viral, he was embarrassed, it became a thing now that I gotta get revenge for my name. I don't really wanna fight, I don't really wanna do nothing, but I gotta because it's my name. And so, you know, we brought them both to the Hamptons, interrupted. We turned our theory into practice, right? Called two staff from, bring them up. We brought them up. We didn't tell them that they were both coming. And the, the first time ever, because we do this all the time, that they, they came in a room and they did not fight. And they sat down and we mediated the whole thing and we're two, taking both full gangs upstate to the Bear Campton, to the, to the hoods, this weekend to mediate the entire situation. Because one thing that is not happening in South East Queens is that drill gang beefs, killing and shooting up our entire community is not happening, not on our watch. We're dedicated to that.
Congratulations, Erica Ford, for that spirited speech. It's very inspiring. I have to tell you, though, if it makes you feel any better, they almost didn't let me in either. <laughs> but I didn't get chased. <laughs> We would now like to recognize the Honorable Audrey Pfeffer, who has a long and distinguished career as a dedicated public servant. Please come to the stage. Currently, Audrey is the Queens County Clerk and Commissioner of Jurors. She is responsible for maintaining all files of the Queens County Supreme Court and Commissioner of Jurors. She supervises the summoning and the placement of jurors selected to participate in all trials in Queens County. Audrey strives to ensure that the jury pool reflects the numerous ethnic, racial, and religious communities represented in the most diverse borough in the nation. Previously, Audrey Pfeffer was a Democratic member of the New York State Assembly representing District 23. Her legislative record demonstrates a fierce dedication to Queens and commitment to improving economic development, increasing access to quality education, expanding health care, and protecting the rights of New York's workforce while expanding the job market. Audrey, it is absolutely our pleasure to present this award to you tonight. We love Audrey. She makes everything happen in the borough of Queens County and as the DA's office, we wouldn't be able to do anything without her, but I'm gonna let her daughter present the award. Oh. <laughs> ma. <laughs> oh, she's a ma, it's a ma, it's a ma thing. It's, it's interesting because you have been serving the public for a long time. But when Melinda at DA Katz has asked you to be honored tonight, I felt like your whole career sort of flashed before us all. Like, I think everyone thinks you be, get honored a lot, but you don't, you sort of just keep on going work like a horse, never <laughs> stop, and just making this borough better. So I'm so honored that I could present this to you in your honor. Um, it's really strange to do this because my mother, I'm very proud to be the apple that came from this tree. And we'll all tell you and we'll sit back and we laugh to say that I never, two young ladies, I would say I would never ever want to be in public office. I'm never going to run for office. But somehow my mother pushed me as that used to that pushing forward, not even knowing she was shoving me off the stage and getting me ready for this opportunity that came in front of me, but I was prepared because women have to be good to women. And you taught me that. And women have to be good friends to each other. And we can't judge each other and not be busy. But with being elected to the New York State Assembly, it allowed your legacy that we were the first mother-daughter ever, ever in New York State, ever in New York State to hold this seat. And that's our legacy, and that's what we need you to do next, young ladies, and the women in this borough to just keep pushing forward. So, in, Mom, on behalf of every woman in this room and every woman in the borough of Queens, we thank you for everything that you've ever done and keeping women strong. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you to the district attorney and the speaker of the city council. This is certainly a, a, an honor. Um, I've been out of the legislature for 10 years and you kind of get rusty in speaking. So, um, you know, you're not used to that. But I want to just say one thing <clears throat> before I talk a bit about myself is that we do a lot at the Queens County Clerk's Office and the Commissioner of Jurors and, and we make it a point to make sure to go outreach to make sure that the jurors represent the community. And that's most important. And I have to tell you, in the 10 years, we've seen the difference. When you walk into that jury room and you see 300 people who are coming and you look at them and you say, this is Queens. So I thank everyone and just keep up the good work. But I could not do it alone, as it said. And I have a group back there of the Queens County Clerk's Office, and I just want to say to them, thank you so very much for making it really, really special. And, and what's special is I realized that I'm here, but when I came into the assembly, I took over for a woman, Gertie Lipschitz. When I came into the, to the county clerk, I took it, um, um, Gloria D'Amico, and these are women who you will look back and say, they really were trailblazers. But I took over from them, and I hope that through the years that I've been involved, that there have been women 
that looked at me and said, wow, I could do that. And I would say, sure you can. Let's work together and move forward. So I thank you, and I thank my staff, and I thank my political friends here, because it was a road, but it was a road of pure love and enjoyment. And I, and I thank you for this honor. Um, it's, been, it's been a long time, and as a Queens College graduate, but I told the, I, another thing that they've done and helped women, part of the ACE program, which is for women who go back. So when I say I graduated in 1983, you think I'm very young, but that's cause in between there were two kids and a whole bunch of other things. But that's what this school's about. They push women, they help, and I thank you and will continue to work for the future of women. Thank you. Congratulations, Commissioner Pepper. I, I interviewed you a long time ago when you were in the legislature, so. Our final honoree tonight is someone who works in the Queen's DA's office, Myrna Mateo, Director of Human Resources. <laughs> Myrna, please come on up while we give you, this is your life. <laughs> Myrna began her career in city government in 1987 as a summer intern with the Mayor's Office of Operations. From there, she was hired to a full-time position as an office associate to the Deputy Director for Citywide Services. Three years later, she moved on to the Conflicts of Interest Board, initially as an executive assistant to the Director and then as Deputy Director of Administration. Myrna remained at the Conflicts of Interest Board for 15 years, until she transitioned to the New York City Department of Small Business Services, SBS. She remained at SBS for 13 years, earning SBS's Everyday Leadership Award in recognition of her ability to build trust and have open, respectful communication with employees. She joined the District Attorney's Office as Director of Human Resources in July 2018 and has been an integral part of the team ever since. Myrna, it's our pleasure to present you with this award. So uh, I, I would say that I am the most thrilled to honor uh, Myrna Mateo. I would say though that Camille Chinky Fat is probably the most thankful for her. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, you know, we all work and get paid and have our care and health care and all the stuff that we have uh, that we're at the DA's office because uh, Ms. Mateo is so good at her job and has a great team uh, that she works with. Uh, and so on behalf of all of us, Smyrna, that you have helped through the years, please accept this on behalf of the Queens District Attorney's family. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, it is a privilege to be in the company of my fellow honor honorees this evening. I must say, you ladies are a tough act to follow. <laughs> um, I believe that human resources is a service profession. This is why I have stayed in the HR field for over 20 years. And what, and what is most fulfilling about my role as an HR director, it is satisfying to be able to help people as they prepare for and navigate different milestones in life. For example, hearing the excitement in the voice of an applicant being offered a position, providing information on all the lovely benefits that the city has to offer, like the pension, 401k plans, um, assistance with time and leave guidance, going through the retirement process, been doing that a lot, uh, <laughs> and, and any other guidance that we can provide. Here in the DA's office, I am lucky to have a team whose hard work allows me to be here accepting this award. Thank you to Freddie, 
the only male in the crew. <laughs> Anna, Rose, Farah, Serena, Diana, Jessica, LaShawn, Ketsy, Amory. And I cannot forget my two boss ladies, Jackie Duckfield and Camille. Thank you for your leadership, your support, and having my back. <laughs> um, I share this honor with all of you. Um, I would also like to give a shout out to my son Justin and daughter Megan. Thank, <laughs> thank you for your love and support and understanding why I don't come home at a decent time to cook you dinner. Um, to my family and friends who are either here or watching, thank you. And once again, thank you DA Katz, Chief Nyberg, Camille, for allowing me to continue providing HR services to the QDA, QDA family. Before I turn the microphone back over to Ms. Murphy, uh, I want to thank Ms. Murphy for being here tonight and the work that she does uh, on behalf of so many groups throughout the city of New York. Uh, I also want to thank the Community Partnerships Division. Talk about powerful women. Colleen Babb, uh, the executive over the Partnership Division, Rakea Akhtar, Anna Sokol, all the folks that were involved uh, to put this together. And I am going to turn it back over to Mary Murphy. We've had a great time tonight but we do serious stuff. And you know, it's okay once in a while with the seriousness of our jobs that we have at the DA's office that we take a moment to honor those that we care about and to take a moment to have a little bit of fun in the process as well. So thank you for being here. Thank you, DA Katz. At this time, I'd like to introduce our final performer of the evening as we close the program. Julie Winter is a multi-talented 14-year-old young lady with a passion to thrive. Julie attends Bayshore Middle School in Long Island, New York, where she was recently selected as one of the top five poets to represent her graduating class, which is quite an honor. Julie has been singing and performing since she was two years old, and she's performed at such distinguished venues as the Apollo Theater and City Hall. Julie has also appeared on television shows, including Law and & Order, and she's also done voiceovers on Sesame Street. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome Julie Winter. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to be singing Rise Up by Andrea Day. <laughs> You've broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. And you can't find the fighter. But I see it in you so we can work it out and move. Mountains, we can work it out and move mountains. And I'll rise up, I'll rise like the day. I'll rise up, I'll rise unafraid. I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again. And I'll rise up. High like the waves, I'll rise up in spite of the ache. I'll rise up and I'll do it a thousand times again. For you, for you, for you, for you. Thank you to everyone and
Most importantly, thank you to every woman in here. You are important, and happy Women's History Month. <laughs> and also, shout out to Black Hist... Oh my gosh, what is it? Black Resource Network? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Julie, that was absolutely amazing. What a stunning way to end this program. Let's give another round of applause to Julie. We'd like to once again congratulate all the honorees tonight. Thank you for coming tonight and being part of Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz's Women's History Month celebration. This will conclude our program for the evening. On behalf of the District Attorney and our co-sponsors, I want to thank all of you again for coming. Be safe, and God bless you. Good night. Okay. We would like the honorees to come all together for a photo. Thank you.